Hey, thanks, everybody. Um, I see people still piling in a little bit. Um, it's great. So um, this is what we're going to talk about. Can, can everybody hear me? All right. What we're going to talk about it. Um, uh, what is Game of Hacks and what's behind it? We're going to have a little contest, not so wet t-shirt contest, uh, but um, don't worry, you're not going to see me without t-shirt or in a wet t-shirt, so I will keep it uh, PG. Uh, we're going to talk about Node.js, which is what um, Game of Hacks is written in. Uh, a little bit, uh, show you a couple things and pitfalls to, to avoid. Uh, nothing too technical, but um, it is going to be interactive, um, unlike maybe some other sessions that you've um, participated in. So pull out your laptops, your mobile phones. There's going to be quizzes and uh, some prizes. So what is Game of Hacks? And how did we come up with the idea? Our Game of Hacks was um, I know, um, designed when um, some of my colleagues were at a conference like this, um, though I think it was Black Hat, and um, they came across developers, or just attendees, standing and staring at the wall. You know, and so when they came closer, realized that uh, developers were just looking at some printed code, trying to find vulnerability vulnerabilities in that code. Oh, interesting way to spend time, right? Uh, instead of uh, going to sessions or or getting some cool uh, giveaways from vendors, you know, just kind of stare at the wall. But um, you know, then we thought that we read this um, OASP uh, survey and uh, realized that uh, you know, developers may not actually know a whole lot about security, application security in general. Right? Um, and it's confirmed by um, uh, CISO surveys, right, that uh, their concerns are lack of uh, understanding and part of developers, application security issues. And their challenges is to educate developers in application security. Right. So we put this, I guess, one and one together, two and two together. And we've designed this um, um, application on uh, online web app, um, Game of Hacks. Launched it in August of last year at Black Hat. Uh, was a pretty big hit. We, um, we had 35,000 participants within the first 24 hours. And uh, I think that number, obviously, is much bigger today. You know, we, um, <clears throat> we initially released it sort of as a marketing campaign. I uh, can trying to get uh, attention to check marks and draw traffic to our booth, but it evolved into a bit more uh, since then. So let's actually take a look at the game um, I, I, in case you guys haven't seen it. Um, uh, so let let me switch to my browser. I think that would probably help. I think this is it, right? I did run through a checklist of uh, things getting ready for the session, but I guess connecting to the internet wasn't one of them. All right, so uh, it's a it's a series of quizzes that uh, you can you can take. You can either play against yourself, right, and spend time, um, or you can play against friends, colleagues, etc. <coughs> there are several la uh, levels available for you to choose from, right? A beginner, intermediate, advanced, and uh, once you start playing, you kind of present it with a. Um, with questions. So uh, can, you, can you guys see actually the text, the code? It's maybe difficult. Is that better? Uh, essentially, you're presented with a code snippet, and you're supposed to answer uh, questions about it. Um, 
uh, answers are timed, right? Uh, and you get points. The faster you answer, well, obviously, you have to answer correctly. Anybody wants to uh, tell me what the vulnerability is in the code? LDAP injection. Going once, twice. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> All right, so that's how it works. All right, you get, um, we got 1,900 points for this. It's a beginner question, and questions get progressively more difficult. Uh, the game is available um, on free. You can welcome to play um, after the session is done. Right? Not now. So let's go back. But um, that wasn't it. You know, once we've released it and uh, we've decided to, um, uh, to actually put some honeypot inside the game. Uh, we've developed the game using Node.js, and we'll talk about it about a bit later. Um, trying to trying to get gather data on um, how Node.js applications can be attacked. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know checkmarks, you know we're in the static application security testing business, so um, very, various um, attacks on application code uh, is of big interest to us and to our uh, security research team. So uh, we put some honeypot honeypots in, and going to tell you, didn't take long for the game to get hacked. So um, yeah, we did assume that it would be attacked. Um, but um, I just uh, some examples from um, uh, you know from a conversations that we saw on, on various hacker forums. Basically, that hey didn't really take long. It, the game itself was harder than than breaking it. Um, so we learned a lot from it. I'm going to share some of that um, information with you, and uh, perhaps you can avoid uh, making the same mistake, or. You know, um, using the same incorrect uh, practices in your applications as well. How many of you actually do program in Node.js or plan to program in Node.js? Hmm. Not too many, but uh, it, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular po platform. Becoming uh, more popular um, uh, makes it very easy to uh, d d uh, deliver um, I.O. Uh, intensive and um, uh, parallel uh, applications. So the architecture of the game is, is pretty simple, right? We have a client, it's a JavaScript client. Uh, we also have a, a Heroku server. Uh, it's cloud-based um, uh, platform as a service. Uh, running our Node.js-based server and the MongoDB uh, as a backend. You know, MongoDB is, is very popular with Node.js developers fits very well with a um, model used by Node.js, a JSON-based uh, uh, exchange of data. So as we probably saw on the actual game screen, you know, there are a couple things. You know, there's a, um, a code that's presented. There's a difficulty level, a score, uh, number of questions, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and a 60-second timer. Pretty simple. So we're going to actually play a little bit of a, a game with you. So uh, use your laptops, use your phones. Uh, there will be uh, questions and as well as uh, prizes for the top five. All right, so go to uh, Kahoot. And um, I'm going to start the game here. I'll give you a code to. Um, So this, that's the pin. I'm going to wait a few minutes for everybody to join. Uh, you can join by uh, entering a pin on the Kahoot website. And for the rest of you who don't want to play, you can enjoy watching some web goats uh, running around. Um, one, don't be shy. Two players. All right, that's something. Guaranteed to win. If less, fewer than, than, than five join, guaranteed to win.
So uh, anybody here actually looked at uh, Game of Hacks before coming to the session? One, two. Yeah, okay. So uh, um, we did a, a version of this talk uh, uh, earlier this year. I can tell you the participation was much better. So, uh, oh, hmm. Hmm. yeah, was hacked. Is that Wi Fi is, is bad, really? Is that? Okay, well that that's that's a that's a big good number. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do ten questions. Some of them are gonna be hard, some of them are gonna be very easy. So question number one. Are you comfortable with in your seat? Yes or no? Okay, I, I take a hint. Well, let's get on with it. So, it's your last chance to join. The first question gave you no points. So, told you some that going to be easy. Okay, so those of you. <laughs> I'm not sure which um, um, you know, numeric system you, you, the rest of you were using, but um, yes, it is four. All your base belong to, to us, right? Um, I belong to us is uh, on top. Oh, now, now we're going to get real. So we're going to look at uh, some uh, code. Can you see it? Oops. I don't know. Is it, uh, yeah, is it better? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, just do a random number. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. Well, apparently somebody did uh, uh, answer correctly. All right, go TK. Up to thousand points. So let's see if we can. I'm not sure why can I why can't I. I can't make it bigger, sorry. Can't see it from there? Yeah. Sorry for those of you on, on this side, it might be difficult. But all hope is not lost, right? See, that one was, uh, I think, maybe a little more difficult. But TK is still going strong. Where's TK? <laughs> Actually, I think my, maybe some of you, uh, some of you look young enough not to know what this uh, cartoon is all about, right?
Sí. Ah, wow, it really tightens up in the, at, at the top, huh? So we, uh, question six. Yeah, it's going to be, um, again, difficult for those of you in the back but, um, and on the side. Three, two, one. Ouch. TK, I hope you did, did it correctly. Yeah, all right. So, uh, you know, if client presents answers in random order, you know, what kind of limitation do we have? Can, can we um, run into? Um, I think you can see it sometimes when when you get login questions or something like that. Um, so if if it's only done in the client by the client, not by the server. Okay. Uh, I guess the, the answer is that if client does random number, random order, uh, it would have to submit that order back to the server, otherwise server won't really know which answer was uh, answered, picked. Oh. Uh. So in, the, in this uh, web application, you should be validating answers. <laughs> server, the client. Server, the client. Oh, the server, and we'll actually um, uh, show you why why it is, right? Um, but I think most of you know. So, what is the problem with this Node.js code? It's really just uh, um, regular code; it doesn't have to be Node.js specific. Um, but this is a server side. Right, sort of side code. <clears throat> yeah, there's no there's no check, you know, what was uh, answered before. You can actually just answer the same um, you know, send the same answer over and over again. TK, did you give up give up? You gave up, right? Ah, oh, come on. So the formula for calculating score in Game of Hacks was uh, you know, 60 minus time to answer times difficulty. So which part do you think can be hacked easily? I would go with 60. Right, time to answer. So, um, right, this is that. This is it for the contest. Uh, Tim and the rest of uh, crew, come by, pick up your cool T-shirt, kind of like this one. Right, mm -hmm. we have some others, and the rest of you who didn't win, you can stop by our booth and get your own T-shirt anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you would have to get scanned. So that's that's see that's that part, and Tim gets it without getting scanned. It's pretty impressive, by the way. Especially that Tom and Jerry answer. <laughs> All right, back to... Um... So, that actually was uh, one of the honeypots in the game, uh, the answered question. That, that, that little um, snippet at the, at the end of the quiz. Initially, the client, did, uh, the server didn't really validate that the answer was already answered. 
right? So that allowed hackers to basically submit the same um, HTTP request uh, over and over again and uh, get their score run up. Um, so a solution was to add a flag to on, on the server to kind of keep track of what's been already uh, answered. And um, similarly, in a real application, keep track of where the client is, really, or should be. The second honeypot was the timer. And that's, uh, most of you correctly guessed um, that the uh, uh, score formula was hacked because the timer could be manipulated by, um, yeah, by just modifying JavaScript on the client. There's some of the, uh, somebody posted a, a very helpful uh, kind of recipe for doing just that uh, very quickly. And of course, solution is to well calculate score on the server. So we moved calculations for the, uh, to the server, and um, uh, there was an impact on on the calculation. Obviously, the latency between the time client sends the, uh, the response and server gets it. But it wasn't really, it was negligible for the overall um, uh, game design. And you can actually try to kind of mitigate that by um, you know, looking at latencies and, and taking that into account. What else? Well, somebody actually um, figured out that if you hold uh, your, your thumb to, to your screen on iPhone while playing the game, you can stop the timer. I don't know. I, I, I certainly wouldn't really think about that um, up front. But um, the solution is the same, really, as to to keep uh, score on the, on, the, on the server. And uh, I think, in general, the message is to not do a lot of uh, calculations on the client in general. So a couple of other Node uh, GS um, things. You know, we have a uh, we have a um, uh, kind of more generic things about Node JS. So first, uh, let's uh, talk about Node JS architecture uh, in, in a, on a high level. Uh, Node JS is a single-threaded uh, event loop-based uh, system. Right? We have an event loop that processes events. Uh, very quickly, parses out tasks to kind of um, handlers, right? I/O handlers, file system, database requests, uh, things like that. Um, registers callbacks, so when the long-running I/O application uh, completes, callback is is also placed in, in the event queue. So this event loop uh, is uh, runs um, very fast, very quickly, constantly. Uh, allows uh, the application to remain very responsive to users. Sort of in human terms, right? You have this um, um, fast food restaurant and uh, the single threaded event processor then gives out tasks to uh, handlers, right? Handlers. So it works well for for this distributed type of um, system. Where it doesn't work well is that if you have CPU intensive uh, tasks uh, that you have to do, that would be tying up the single threaded um, event loop, right? And that's actually the first uh, thing you, you, you need to remember about Node.js. Do not put anything CPU intensive in, in there. Because a simple uh, attack can be uh, turned into denial of service. I'm going to show you a little demo. It's pretty quick. So uh, you know something that calculates the sum of all integers from one to p. Yeah, should run typically runs really fast. All right, so let's. So um, 
you know, pretty quickly, right? Now, what happens if we do that? What kind of increase the number? It takes a while, right? It takes a while, a while to calculate, but since we only have a single thread, even our very simple example cannot proceed. Right? It takes, will not, uh, you will not be able to calculate a uh, very simple one through five until the other thread finishes. So that um, uh, pretty simple example shows you how uh, easy it is to um, get denial of service uh, attack on, on, on Node.js apps that don't, um, not careful about uh, putting CPU intensive apps into, uh, CPU intensive um, code into the main thread. I guess we're finished now, that's a long number, but um, um, keep that in mind when you, when you design your own apps. That was the demo, actually. Uh, what other things that uh, um, Node.js is acceptable to? So um, Node.js is a really JSON-based uh, system, right, that uh, has built-in tools to process uh, JSON files. Uh, MongoDB is a popular backend. It stores JSON, uh, allows you to retrieve data using JSON files. Essentially, you know, requ uh, doesn't require you to learn complicated SQL or um, even organize your data in structured table-like formats. So, for example, instead of uh, using normal SQL kind of select from database users where user equals this and password equals that, um, it's a very simple single uh, line uh, query that you can do in Node.js. However, let me show you a little trick that uh, basically JSON allows you to put um, uh, conditionals inside of it, right? So, um, So it's just a very simple login screen, right? That um, takes a username and password, kind of lets you in or not. And so I can I can do admin admin, and I get get in. But if I do admin something else, I don't get in, right? I don't really have to type anything, right? I can just put it in the URL. Same um, result as uh, actually typing the request password. Right? So, I can bypass the actual login verification by um, crafting uh, correct JSON file using greater than So all I did was just put greater than A and greater than A for the username and password, and I'm in as an admin, because that um, selects all users with the username greater than A and password greater than A, or yeah. so. Um, uh, where if you not careful and not validating uh, user input uh, properly easy to buy, get the um, you know, application security uh, breached. Now, a possible workaround for this is actually not to um, put a password inside the, the initial query, but to just get users based on username and then compare password using some other um, kind of method. Right? Now that opens um, application up to um, to regex denied of ser denial of service attacks. So the idea is that regex is a very CPU intensive um, operation, and as we just saw, 
Uh, Node.js doesn't really like CPU intensive uh, applications. And so um, instead of a very quick uh, login page, I can paste something like this. Actually, it takes a lot, a while to paste into the. And a login login screen will um, will um, uh, be hung for a while. I mean, I, I can obviously submit the even longer string with for the regex and maybe come up with something that um, takes a little longer to up, to run. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Node.js is very happy to execute uh, all sorts of things inside JSON, evaluate and execute it. And so that opens uh, the application up for uh, for various attacks. So how are we doing? Oh, we're actually doing well on time. So I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show another demo, since it uh, looks like we're OK. And um, I'm gonna, we're going gonna to talk about uh, takeaway so uh, later. So another problem with Node.js is that um, is actually the default uh, random number generator used by V8. You know, Node.js is executed by Google's V8 uh, JavaScript engine, the back end. The, um, there's some of some research was done uh, earlier on a V8 uh, random number generator. Not going to go into too many de details here, but uh, essentially by uh, guessing three consecutive, but by knowing three consecutive num uh, random numbers, we can predict fourth and all the subsequent random numbers. So. Um, Actually, maybe you, can, you guys can look at the code and tell me if you see anything wrong with it. Right? This actually is, a, is, a, is code taken from a, an authentication library, a JavaScript-based authentication library, open source. And it um, yeah, generates a new user password. Right? It um, kind of takes random number, um, makes a string out of it, and hashes it with MD5. So what's... Uh, you know, what's wrong? I'm sorry, what? User. No, I'm not sure that's. Um... Right, so math.random math isn't really random. I think that's probably a bigger issue here. Um, yeah. I'm well, it is pseudo-random number, but you're not supposed to be able to guess it anyway, right? Uh, it's, it's not uh, not sufficiently crypto cryptographically random, so it's random enough for you know for certain things, but not for cryptography. Now, MD5, of course, is not a very uh, good hash either, right? Uh, not a very strong hash. You can quite easily break it, reverse it. So. Uh, it, again, without going into too many technical details, just by knowing three consecutive random numbers from math.random, we can guess fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. So, um, what's the angle of attack here? Right, we can use reset password functionality or new user functionality on the website. Right, reset three consecutive. Uh, user passwords that we know about, right? And then reset a password for another user, right? That new password will go out in the email. We don't have to actually get that email. We can, um, we can figure out that password um, ourselves. Now I'm going to show you how that works. Well, you, you send a yeah, well, you send a new password, right? When you reset a password, you send a new one to to go log in and then change to something else, right? When you when you reset when you reset a password in, uh, on the website, right? I forgot my password. We'd rather use a testing password. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
right, but that how many how many how many sites are there? How many users are actually using two-factor authentication and all? It, use token instead of in pass. Yeah. So there, are, again, there are obviously ways to uh, uh, to do it more securely. But uh, I think sending passwords or getting new passwords in the email is, is for now, at least, very popular and you know, prevalent, really. So uh, what we have is a. Um, What we have is a, an MD5 decoder, right? We actually went out and built a pretty big rainbow table. Very nice. And um, I have this test website that's very secure. It has a picture of a lock on it. So we're going to do three consecutive uh, passwords, right? Your user new new password is yeah. it's actually pretty long and secure, right? So that was the first random number. Remember, we need three. We're going to do uh, another user. It actually is, is a uh, uh, rainbow table with a MD5. It's uh, 15 gig. We had to actually build it because we couldn't find an open one, an existing one. Um, the random number generated by math.random is longer than uh, what you typically see on the, on the web. So it is our own pretty big couple hundred gig. All right, and so we have two. Yeah, just brute force. Yeah, it's table, lookup table. Yeah. Okay. So that's our third. So now we calculate the next pseudo-random number. It's going to take a little bit. But, um, so um, here's the password that the next user will get. Let's see. See, so I don't really have to get your email anymore. So if you put something besides user three in that box, it still works. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Just so the idea is that you, the first three emails or users you control, and the fourth one is you know can be some somebody you want to attack, and so that fourth one you can you will guess, um, you'll be able to guess the password and then log in and. Um, Yeah, it does rely on sequence. So you want to, I guess, it could be that somebody else will generate a password. Yeah. 
but since you, you typically don't have to actually type it, you can just submit it pretty quickly and um, you know, have a fairly, uh, be fairly confident that that's the third, that that's the three, right? It's all, it will all be scripted, not, not manually. Yeah, you can generate all sequence numbers from here on out by, by just knowing three random, three se sub, uh, sequent, um, consecutive uh, random numbers. And so this actually is a known issue in, in, in V8, and Google knows about it and um, not going to fix it because in a normal browser, each tab has its own uh, sequence, and so you can only predict the next number for your own tab which is not very interesting, right? However, V8 uh, is shared, one instance of V8 is shared by all Node.js um, uh, threads that, uh, sessions that, that are running. And so all Node.js sessions will share the same sequence of, uh, of random, number uh, random numbers. So yeah, so uh, use a token, don't rely on math.random, use something else. Uh, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting vector of attack, so um, be careful. Uh, there's, a, there's a research done by um, uh, Amit Klein that um, goes back to 2009 about the weaknesses on V8, uh, in V8 um, uh, pseudorandom number generator, and we just took it and and adapt, put it in a demo, and adapted it to Node.js. And so that's, again, when it was uh, discussed back in 2009, um, it, it was really assigned a low priority, a low severity, because uh, each tab is separate in, the, in, in Chrome. But once you apply the same thing to Node.js, that becomes a, more, a lot more exploitable. All right, I'm all out of demos for today. You know, we have a, a few minutes left, so. Um, we have a slide on the OSP uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, the slides will be, yeah, the slides, the presentation will be on the OSP side. Um, you can't really upload our rainbow table for MD5, but. Uh, I, I stop by to get your t-shirts if you're interested, so. Thank you.